Well, hello everybody and welcome back into the yard and gardens for the kind of traditional end of May look at, uh, well, how things are doing, you know, my setup for my annuals, how the perennials doing, you know, just things along those lines. I do apologize, um, Mike is not with me today, it has died, I need to recharge the batteries and I simply didn't have time to do that today because my charger is slow. So hopefully the wind will not be too bad, I will do my best to block it. So saying that, of course, the wind did pick up. I'd like to share with you one of the newest additions to our yard. We were given this lovely and somewhat monstrous cold frame. Uh, we had some neighbor friends who were getting rid of it and thought of us, so absolutely stellar. I'll roll that up and you can take a look at how things are doing with their hardening off process. Um, to finish your drink now, you know, people are known to spit out their their beverages and laughing when they see my my plant starts but yeah I'll roll that up and you can take a look anyway guess we'll just kind of start at the left here these are those milder so-called hot peppers that I got at the local nursery I still laugh you know I'm picking them up and the lady working there says, so you like spicy foods do you and I'm like these yes yes I do but these will do for now you know the two bathroom monsters some sort of Scorpion crosses, I believe, are surviving, coming back outside. These things are what, like three years old now? Let me know in the comments below if you've actually, you know, got a memory of how old these things are. I'm pretty sure it's at least two, possibly three. And as I'm looking back now, the very back of that one, very spindly branch, I see flowers. Flower open even, so yay. This was open a little bit earlier today, so hopefully may have gotten pollinated. Got a super chilly here. Apparently this guy's got an open flower too. That's wonderful, but kind of sucks because it's going to get through a little bit of transplant shock, isn't it? When I actually plant it out. And then back here we've got the ghost and the Trinidad scorpion. They are not enjoying their adjustment with outside temperatures and all of that but whatever harden up folks harden up some very sad tomatoes in the front of that eh? tragic slightly better looking ones over to the side not too bad many of them are labeled but many of them are also question marks so they'll either be like bush beefsteak tomatoes or black creme tomatoes or yellow cherry tomatoes basically take a look at what's going on there whole lot more tomato starts going on here these are all looking you know mildly better than those first four but they've been out a lot longer too those first four were kind of left behind because I didn't know if I was even gonna bother now these plants do not look so great to me we got they got what some powdery mildew going on here that's not thrilling but these are like the pumpkins and the zucchini and maybe some cucumbers that I got with the uh, peppers at the nursery there. I am not happy, you know, like this, this looks okay, but yeah, a lot of powdery mildew going on there. Then back there we've got my tray full of herbs. I've got some dill in there, some parsley, some cilantro. Let's see what else, some sage. And right in that top, or the I guess it would be the bottom right corner there. A few of the basil that popped up. Surprisingly few of the basil that popped up. The tray here. That is either a pumpkin or a squash. And then these are a whole bunch of really leggy the others. You know, either the pumpkin or the squash. I didn't label it and it got turned several times. I don't know. I'll be amazed if those are the spaghetti squash because those seeds look super papery and just really questionable. And over here we've got some incredibly leggy sunflower starts and let's see some painted lady runner beans I believe. A couple of zucchinis and possibly a watermelon so we'll, we'll, I'm really excited. We'll see. And then back there is the current from the aquaponic garden that I've been transferring into soil as soon as it came out into real heat it well those leaves died pretty fast I am hoping that it's established enough in that planter that I'm going to see some new leaves coming off of there that are uh, well more suited to this climate but anyway speaking of the climate it is a little chilly today so I'm going to roll that cover back down 
and we'll take a look at, well, something else next. Well, from the kindness of one set of neighbors to the things that annoy other neighbors, we've got the land shoppers, our garden ships here. I still haven't done much with these two larger ones. And the more I think about it, the more I'm kind of thinking about taking some of the fresh soil there from freshly tilled patch. I'm hoping to get that one open as well. I'm not sure if my starts are going to survive long enough to need it, but we'll see. And some of the tomato soil back there. Maybe some of the three sisters soil. And doing a layer on top so they have something to grow in. Because I just I want to give it a jump start for this year. And as long as I've got all of this carbon in there, it's going to absorb the water like a dream. And that's kind of the point of a lot of this. So yeah, the sooner I can grow in it, the better it'll be. And on that theory, I thought, okay, so we've got these raised beds, right? Maybe this is a good place to try and use that uh, brassica cloth that I've got. So in this one here, I did put a big bag of uh, 80 liters of soil. It was like $9 or something. Forgive the grunting as I'm moving the protective rocks. It's been really windy. And surprisingly, those rocks have done quite a trick. But, if we look in here, da -da -da -da, we can see a bunch of little cabbage starts. And in addition to the cabbages, I also put a whole bunch of the leftover onions. So, you know, this is green right there, for example. That's an onion green. It's an onion green right there. Cabbages, 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 cabbages. Now, I have put a ton of onions in here and I'm not going to completely uncover this to show you but from my perspective and hopefully on the camera there are lots of them popping out and there are also loads of cabbages so I will need to thin that out for uh, anything even remotely resembling success but so far so good on using this little cloth to protect it from our very prevalent Barasca moths. Because every second year that backfield is canola. Same family, same pest. So yeah, it's been very tricky. No cabbages here in the past. But if this does work, then I am definitely dedicating one of these three beds, or possibly even two of these three beds, to cabbages and Barasca crops in the future. I can get another one of these claws, maybe put some poles up in the middle to create an archway, do myself some Brussels sprouts in there. Oh yeah, you're a very happy camper. And to those of you who just wrinkled your nose to Brussels sprouts, they're good if they're prepared right. And homegrown is always better than store-bought. Just trust me. Strange angles for all of today's shots, but I'm trying to use my body to block the wind so it's not so bad on the mic. This is um, my first area I chilled up this year. Well, it's the first area I tilled from sod ever, to be perfectly honest. And I learned a few things about tillers, like where it looks like they're going to miss a stripe in the middle. They do. They very much miss a stripe in the middle. So this kind of looks like I set it up for square foot gardening in, in some patches. And I'm still going to need to go through here with, uh, I don't know, garden claw, garden fork. Or maybe just take the tiller to it again. But here's a really good example there's a stripe there, there's a stripe there, stripe there, stripe there, stripe there. I mean, even just going across it this way could make a huge difference. It's just going to be tomatoes in here this year, though, so we'll see. Well, I don't know, might not just be tomatoes, we'll see. Big old root, man, was that thing fun when I hit that with the tiller. Oh my goodness, so much fun. So far, our little Mount Royal Plum seems to be settling in nicely. We had a few leaves. Did suffer a little bit at the transplant, but that's kind of to be expected. For the most part, this thing is beautiful and green. And this weird little straw and stump thing, you know what? <laughs> I've gotten kind of attached to it. I kind of like the look of it. And apparently the birds like it too, so we'll see if that sticks around as a long-term thing or maybe just for this year, but kind of interesting. A nice little 
alleyway forming here. Plum all in front of the gardens there with the lilac in there. And moving back, because we're working on the fruit line here, right? This is our edible fencing area. Oh, sorry, we got the wind. I'll turn. But we're looking at the pear tree right now. And some of the spent flowers on here, there's still a few blossoms left. Not many, but she exploded this year and is covered with swollen spent flowers. So I am very hopeful that we will get maybe a few pears off of this tree. Like here is an excellent example of a branch. Like there's no way that branch could possibly produce all of those. So if it tries to, I'm gonna have to uh, thin that, but oh my goodness, what a beautiful and strong start for it to attempt, you know, absolutely beautiful. Saddest little rhubarb in Strathclair right here, I tell you, people are surprised when we tell them we've got a rhubarb growing, because this is it. Our neighbors across the street is probably up to my waist, but that said, when the freezing temperatures come, the toxins apparently shoot down from the leaves and into the stems, making it black and, uh, well, toxic. So if that's happened, you want to uh, break those ones off at the ground, just toss them to the side. Do not eat them. Not good for you. Anywho, that is our sad little rhubarb. Kind of looks like something's been nibbling away at it. And that said, we saw five wild turkeys running through town yesterday. So I don't know if turkeys dig on rhubarb leaves or not, but maybe. Here we have a new addition to the yard. This is a black Conan uh, black currant bush. So it doesn't look like much from this angle and that there looks terrible, but we'll get to that in a second. For a change, I decided to do some success pruning when I put this in. It was very densely clustered in there. So yeah, that's what this is. I guess we'll get to this now. And then, because so many people told me with the red current that currants are so easy, you just clip them and stuff them into the ground. That's exactly what I did with my cuttings. I didn't even use any rooting powder or anything. I just thought, what the heck? You know, I'm gonna cut them off anyway. I might as well give it a try. It's been a few days and some of these look surprisingly good. So, uh, you know, I might have a few that really yeah, got enough in them to make roots and produce new bushes for me in the first year of owning the plant, which would be fantastic because I'm not used to paying full price for things. So if I can clone it in the first year, I've already huh, started to reap some profits, haven't I? That said, I did leave some clusters on here and they look like they're gonna be beautiful little berries, much like all of the other perennials like my berries are already starting to produce. The Saskatoons are showing. The red currants that we'll look at in a few minutes are just absolutely exploding. I got the pears that are showing themselves. I've got gooseberries that are showing themselves. Oh, I gotta show you the honeyberries too, but. So yeah, this little black Conan, or Ben Conan. There, I knew that sounded wrong. Ben Conan black currant. Yes. Nicely situated in between a couple of the trees which is kind of the plan. We want to do tree, bush, tree, bush. To that end, we have the Romeo. Little cherry tree still hasn't been planted yet, but we've got some restructuring that kind of needs to be done here. This is um, hmm, a woven branch square filled with years of compost that the garter snakes love to hide in. So yeah, it's gonna be, I, I got some stuff to do before I can do that. But the Romeo still looks okay, maybe a little shy of water. I think waiting a couple more days isn't killing it. Juliet, sweet, sweet Juliet. Again, hoping changing my angle will block more of the wind. Look at the fantastic blossoms all over the Juliet this year. Last year, not very productive. I think maybe we got one cherry. That's fine, you know, you get what nature gives you. Um, but that is also probably part of why we got Romeo. Maybe they can take turns. Hopefully they won't be producing in the same years. 
but you know if they do then yay bumper crop year but again look at these and so many of the trying to get in there while still covering the mic so many of the spent flowers look a little swollen at the back and like they might be starting to form oh, let me oh let go Juliet oh, it'll be good be nice to see always curious always curious so that brings us over to the garden we have the chaos garden here which is kind of a carbon dump right now but in front of that we've got garlic planted one little box of garlic with three little bulbs turned into an amazing amount of garlic cloves to plant and this is not suppressing the weeds quite as much as I had hoped but I did see when I checked in here the other day what looked like might be some garlic sprouting up so I don't want to disturb it too bad and I'm hoping that in time this will do what the onion patch has done. Now again the straw did not fully suppress the weeds however you know I'll show you behind me in a second here this this garden bed is well and truly planted <laughs> with dandelion and lettuce variety seeds so yeah this is actually fairly well suppressed and these should be easy enough to pull assuming they're not thistles for which I will want my gloves however when we look at the onions see onion 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 they are popping up all over this little patch and as they get bigger it's going to be much much easier to see them and of course, you know, when I do pull the broad leaves and the thistles, it'll, it'll make it a lot easier to see them as well. But this, I think, is going to work out really, really well. And I'm really excited to see what the long-term results are. Because homegrown always tastes better, and I, I like onions. There's a lot of red onions in here. There's a lot of white onions in here. I like both. So, grow, my babies, grow. Again, speaking of onions, here are the uh, perennial onions that I moved forward. We're still looking at that same garden bed. It's just instead of turning around, I kind of had to reposition with the stupid wind situation. But anyway, these particular perennial onions are doing fantastic. And I will absolutely be moving more of them forward because the growth on these is phenomenal. But as I was saying a moment ago in the previous clip, this garden bed likes to produce dandelions. So, yeah, that straw is suppressing a great deal. I am very happy with how well it is doing. Next to it, though, we've got the Three Sisters patch. It's just planted out the other day, so nothing's sprouting yet. But I did do some mowing for my in-between areas to protect the water I do put on there. Looking forward to seeing some growth there in the next days, weeks, months. We shall see. And backing up here to try and block the wind. We got the potato piles. Not seeing much going on in the potato piles, but it's not that warm yet. This is, after all, Manitoba. So, yeah. Still hardening off plants. Still technically shouldn't plant until June 1st, but that's like a couple of days. So, whatever. And we got the bunker garden here. I've already harvested some incredible greens for the chickens off of here, several pounds at least. So yeah, that's great. And I'm pretty sure I'm still gonna go with tomatoes in here. Tomatoes have done exceptionally well in the past and I'd like them to do it again for me this year. They say you can grow them in the same place year after year. So kind of thinking maybe that is the destiny of the bunker garden. This is one of the first garden projects we did here. And it's still working way better than I ever expected. Trying to take a look at the gooseberry mother plant here. The flowers, again, pretty much entirely spent themselves, but if we look carefully, we can see the beginning of fruit. You see on my pinky there? I mean, it's tiny. These aren't big berries to begin with, but this thing is 
truly getting more productive every year. And last year I took 17 cuttings off of it, a whole bunch of which are planted right up there, and many of which also had flowers this year, so we might see berries off of them. They're pretty small, so I'm not counting my chickens before they're hatched. But when you roll up the branch and look underneath, there's a lot of flowers on there. It has been an absolutely beautiful year as far as scenery from the berry bushes. What was amazing was the honeyberry bush. As to be expected, this thing exploded with flowers nice and early. And as soon as the big fat bumblers found it, you could literally hear this bush humming. And if you stop and look, you'd find half a dozen in there. Now, this thing starts off so early, those are already berries forming. And those are not the only ones by far on this bush. Absolutely love the honeyberry as a perennial option for cold weather climates. I can't even get my tomatoes into the ground yet. This has already gone through greening up, flowering out, and is set fruit with a lot of production in mind. And what have I done for this plant? I haven't even watered this plant. Technically this year I have done nothing. I mowed it. I didn't give it fresh mulch. But I mowed it. I love perennial gardening. It's like the lazy gardener's dream. Oh, there's a couple of some nice ones on there. And the Hascap berry, it's a little cousin over here. We'll just take a couple of quick steps. This produces much larger berries from a much smaller bush, as i known to say, but it's already got some nice ones on there too. It's gonna be a very productive year. Let's see, I think that's just about everything, except maybe what, the red currants? Oh, and the wind picks up, so this will probably be my closing clip too, folks. But as we look at this, flowers all over it a little bit spent hoping to see those berries forming if i look really carefully i can but i dare not zoom with this camera because it's zoom is poo i am going to be moving this plant this year so i'm in the process of taking lots of cuttings off as you see in the black cloth planter there oh yeah and i still have to plant that beautiful purple grape that i was gifted this current is going insane. And the wind is deciding to join it. I really hope it survives its transplant. If anybody's got any uh, advice or suggestions on transplanting a current of this size, by all means throw that in the comments below. As always, much love to you all my garden friends. I hope it is warmer where you are. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a wonderfully bountiful 2021.